Hi, I'm going to introduce you now to a new product that we're um, selling on the tvtrade.ie website, which is the Vortex Star uh, 3300 HD digital terrestrial receiver. Now, um, this product has been added onto the website since the uh, launch on the 29th of October 2010 of the new digital terrestrial um, service in Ireland. Uh, it's officially called Serview, and you can use this or a range of other receivers to be able to pick up this service. Okay. Uh, so the basic uh, qualification of this box is that it's MPEG-4 and it's HD. Okay, so just to give you a quick overview of what channels are available, currently you're able to get um, RT1, RT2, which is now being broadcast in HD and standard definition. Uh, that's why it's vitally important that this, um, the, the bo whatever box you choose, should be high definition. Also, TV3, 3E. Uh, TG Car and um, the RT News channels are available um, on the new digital service and the old analog service is going to be turned off at the end of 2012 okay so people everybody in the country will have to move away from analog who's currently using and that includes hundreds of thousands of houses okay so basically what do you do, what, what would you need for this thing here well you'd need this box here which I'm going to overview in a minute and also just quickly to show you uh, you'd need a, um, a UHF aerial such as this. So if you live in an area of the country that's using UHF aerials already, which is really effectively the whole country, and it's working well on analog, the likelihood is you'll just need to buy this box and probably won't need to buy an aerial. Certain color-coded aerials may have a problem, but that's a sort of discussion for another day. But anyway, I'm just going to start off and give an overview of what actually comes in this box, okay? So I'll open it here, and inside we have a user's manual, which um, it's quite good and it also comes in English, so that's um, a benefit uh, for the non multilingual among us. Um, we have the receiver itself, okay, which I'll give an overview of it in a moment. We have a remote control which comes with treble A batteries, which I've already installed. We have a power unit here and also a three pin plug adapter, which I'm just going to show there, okay, and that's for powering the box. And also it comes with a lead. Now, currently, um, uh, it just comes with this um, RCA or phono lead here, and this is for connecting the box to a standard definition television and um, to run standard definition boxes across. And also, we're giving a HDMI lead, which you see in front of you here as well, to allow it to plug this box into um, a high definition television. And this is particularly important for televisions uh, for so something like RT2, which is currently in the broadcast in a thing called HD Light. Okay, now there's another option, there's a few associated products I'll quickly give you an overview of right now. Um, if you're running, we'll say, a standard definition uh, uh, box that has a, a television that has a SCART input but not a uh, HDMI uh, or not a HDMI input, you can come along and buy, buy this uh, lead, which is an associated product, which simply has a SCART output on one end and an RCA um, uh, plugs on the far end, and that'll allow you to connect this box directly to uh, your standard definition television. And to be able to take, make benefit of both the PVR and the media player functionality within this receiver, we also sell uh, USB keys and hard drives uh, on the tvtrade.ie website. So I'll just give an overview of the box itself. We'll start off and we'll look at the rear of the box. So if I just go through the various options here, we can see here that we have an antenna in, which will actually come from the aerial I showed uh, earlier. So you're, you're, you're taking in the digital signal from a UHF aerial. There's a loop out here which simply allows the, the original digital signal to be fed to a certain box, a, a second receiver. There is no modulator inside this box, so it's not possible to feed the output of the box itself to uh, additional televisions. If you wanted to do that, you'd need to add on an external modulator or something like a Tri-Link, which will actually allow you to control the box from a second location, ideal for people who are planning to put this box in an attic, for instance. Uh, we move on then, and um, it, for the RCA leads that I discussed earlier, if you wanted to connect this to a standard definition television, you simply use these here, uh, connect it as per the colour codes, and then connect it into a television. Uh, moving on then, the next uh, major point here is the HDMI. So you'd use the HDMI lead to connect this box to a high definition television. Uh, and um, uh, uh, finally then, we'll move on to the USB key here. So you can insert either a USB um, key into this slot or, or possibly an external hard drive. And as I mentioned earlier, this is for using the PVR functionality or the media behavior functionality within the box. And then we have here the 12 uh, volt um, input here from the from a, a power unit that comes with the box. Now if we rotate the box around, 
On the front here we can see that we have a volume up and down, a channel up and down and a select button, a menu button and a power on and off button. And it's very handy to have these functionalities because if you ever misplace your remote uh, or your battery goes dead, you can still operate this box quite effectively. Okay, so the next step here, I'm just going to give a quick overview of how to install this box. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll pick up um, this power lead here and I simply want to come along and install this. Now the wrong way to put this on is this way where you can't plug it in. So if you turn it around this way you can actually slot it straight through. You can tighten the screw to lock it into position but even like this it'll work. And you simply come along and we push this into the three pin plug here. Now we come along and we're going to take a feed from an aerial that we have outside here. So I'm going to rotate this box around to the back and if we come along here um, uh, we just push this lead in here like this to get a feed. I'm going to get a HDMI uh, input here to connect this to a HD television here. Okay, and if we wanted to connect this box to an actual standard definition television, I'm just going to pull in this RCA lead that we have here, and we would just go as per the color codes. So red would go into red, uh, yellow to yellow, uh, red and white do the sound. Uh, left and right and yellow does the picture okay so you come along here and the final step then so normally we'd only connect one of these I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes this would be for connecting to a standard definition television and if we had a high definition you'd always use the HDMI lead because why lose the benefit of the high definition picture okay and we come along then and we simply connect in this power lead so we push it in like this and I'll simply turn the box around now and what's happening here is you can see the box is actually booting up. There's a sticky filament across the front here just to keep the box protected. Now I already had the television set here. Just show you quickly on the menu thing here. Uh, the source button on this, I had it set to HDMI like this, okay? We could move it to a different option here um, if it was on a, on a thing like this. And this is how it will come up out of the box directly. It will come up on the installation menu. And all we do here is, you can go for the default country like Iran and kick off the searching. But we're going to move on to the installation, the actual installation here in a later video. But that's it basically, uh, beginning to end, how to install the box. And once I click the, uh, channel search here, it's 60 seconds later and it will pick up all the channels. Okay, so that's an overview of the installation of a um, of a high definition digital terrestrial uh, receiver